Good morning. Welcome everybody to day 11. So we're moving right along. Chat box. Take a look at the chat box for the working document for today. So let's get into a few things. So first of all, let's see. Uh, if we maybe start with Well, yesterday, actually, interesting conversations with um, so Dara Dots from field, formerly from Field Rage, now she's doing a startup. So she's doing 3D printing. It's interesting, I guess, the one 3D printing for housing, actually, but using a different proprietary technology that she's developing, which is more like pressure extrusion and and milling of panels. One take home for me is make sure that what we're doing, if we're going to talk about house cost reduction with 3D printing, that outgassing is an issue. Uh, Yes, by all means. If that's the case, and how much it's the case, basically the thing is when you melt plastic, you get into into fumes, like even PLA, PLA, which is a bioplastic that still has some fumes in it. You can you can kind of feel it if you printing with it inside your closed room. You, you're gonna start feeling feeling some of the fumes, and definitely if you print with, with, for example, ABS when you're printing it in a room, you're gonna get lightheaded. I mean that stuff is it's nasty. So, but once solid, it's good. We, we live with plastics. Well, it's good to an extent, to, to the point that it's accepted in society, but uh, it's may still not be the best. But that doesn't matter. Uh, there's still a lot of areas where things where it's not about interior rooms, but exterior contacts, such as vinyl siding, gutters, plumbing, like wood contact with the earth, like ponds. Um, various applications that still are quite relevant so there's a lot of a lot of stuff that can be still done and if you talk about the fumes like one thing I'm thinking about so we're thinking about okay there's concrete there's steel there's plastic there's wood as some of the main building materials uh, what about if we 3d print forms that are mixed with uh, cement so say you do forms that are effectively lattices that you then plaster over People already use metal lath for that purpose. So say you do plastic forms, like if you're talking about dirt cheap housing, waste stream plastic plus concrete stucco would be, it's an idea. It's, there's many ways you can think about this. Uh, we talked about the forms for things like packing them with earth. But if that issue it does exist in a bad way, uh, i.e. fumes, get encapsulated like a lot of the issue that's around plastic is that over time they degrade and decompose or actually they're burned actually Dara said that it's not grade one two three plastic whatever those plastics are like polyethylene and so forth like according to her plastics number four and up they typically end up getting burned you know they're not recycled they're actually getting burned um, now the advantage for a high temperature printer if um, that we were talking about was that you can also go with a vi very high temperature, high performance plastics that we can take all those kinds of plastics out of the waste stream. That's, that's the advantage, that, that's the use case. A lot of the, the, the plastics, grade one, two, three, are recycled, but beyond that it's not because it's just not economically feasible today to do so. So that's just one little bit of feedback. Any Anything else out of uh, Dara's visit that came out as an interesting point for you guys, or did you guys talk to her a lot, or? Yeah, she was here for much. a while. Um, there are projects that sounded really interesting, pretty stressful, honestly, but um, you could definitely see the need <laughs> for, if she had some open source <laughs> That's what I support, said. it would have been yeah. a lot different. Yeah, I was thinking about it, it's like I'm talking to her and it's like, man, just look at how, look at the stress levels there, you just basically, in, like basically throwing yourself into a war zone after their interest funders want their cut uh, R&D costs are significant yeah so just, just that's you know let's make it easy let's make like easy is my good, comment on that good call, so, but we still need to and the scalability <laughs> okay so say they develop it and they're the only company in the world that does it well they're the bottleneck they're not going to distribute it so either they become a huge monopoly and centralized or this thing doesn't spread. So, you know, question, questionable. Anyway, just the general philosophy of how this works. All right. Um, question question yeah. about, um, I, I've actually been wanting to ask about fume stuff. Maybe this is a good yeah. time. Because uh, that is a concern for me just on a, on a small scale, even, you know, using it and kind of 
uh, for your own health. Like, so are there any like best practices in terms of aside from just being in a well ventilated space? Like, I've seen there like you know boxes you can put around it and filters or something. Yes, a filter What's... with charcoal and other means that you've got proper filtering of the stuff. If you're doing it in an office, yeah, that's common industry standard. I put filters on top of these machines if you're doing that. Maybe if you're printing with PLA, that's not super important. Like, for example, if you see the big print farms from Prusa printers, there's no evidence of of filters on the individual machines. Maybe they have, like, like venting in their facility or whatever. It's a real issue. Like, whenever you melt plastic, you're going to get fumes. Now, it depends what the plastic is and what, what additives there are. There are certainly food-grade plastics, plastics that you can eat from, which are... I would suppose they might be safe if they pass, but you don't know. I mean, maybe we don't know some things. But we do know that, like, polypropylene, when it's pure polypropylene or pure polyethylene, I mean, they're safe. They're just hydrogens and carbons. Once you start adding additives, plasticizers, other things, maybe for, maybe fire retardants, UV suppressors, I don't, maybe not UV suppressors, but definitely like the fire retardants, then you get into all this other stuff. Now, you can also say that there's probably environmentally friendly alternatives for those nasty things, the additives. And um, altogether, you do have to consider that issue. So, do the, do the filters, do they help minimize like VOCs getting into the atmosphere and stuff? Yeah, they would take it out to, to pretty much to complete safe levels. Because the VOCs, they, they would not be like major. I mean, if you're within. Like if you're under the decomposition temperature of the plastic, which is just melted, uh, and you're not decomposing the plastic, actually like thermal breakdown, then you're you're decent. And it depends on the plastic. So you have to take case by case for a plastic on a per plastic basis. And this is the material science behind this. It's coming from me, but what happened there? Now if I mute myself, I'm quiet. Are you using the mic on the phone? No, I'm not sure. It seems to have gone away, so I think we're good. Um, Hopefully I'm not using the mic on the phone. Yeah, so Matt, does that address the issue? It's plastics. I mean, whatever safety issues with plastics exist. Now, you know there's plenty of plastics like polycarbonate, um, ABS, PVC that are common plumbing plastics. Polyethylene tends to be the more safe. Like, for example, if there's PVC plumbing and there's polyethylene plumbing. Polyethylene is more expensive on the plumbing side, like maybe twice as much money. Um, but for everything out there, there's a safe alternative. This is all about profit motive and the cheapest cheapest things. They're typically toxic. If they're if you pay attention to that, that's one of maybe one of the design points to say it's like okay, let's get society towards using more benign plastics if we use plastics. So that's yeah. That's a thing and and it, is there a particular like enclosure or filter that that you? That we use or that you suggest for like the small models like uh, the people would use for their home? Haven't done it yet. We're going to do that for the big printers because they're going to be high temperature. So we're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. They're going to be enclosed. And even for the current ones, like the 18 inch, should we should have that too. Uh, that's a great feature so that you can run this in an office without getting anybody sick. Right. So that's kind of standard if you want to do it in a place where there's people and you're not ventilated. Well enough. That's that. We haven't built build these. It's not too hard. It's air filters, air filter technology. So carbon filters and other filters, particulate f filters. Uh, so that's a that's a one of the modules to develop. Uh, haven't played with it yet. Great. Okay. okay. Thanks. Yep. Moving on in um, agenda here. So Joshua, any reports on a Project management board. So I invited you yesterday to uh, the Trello board we stood up. Mm -hmm. Matt's been working on it as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's pretty 
well sorted right now. If you want to go take a look at it and kind of just... Okay, can uh, you paste, paste it, it in... Um, it's, it's in Discord somewhere. Uh, can you put it in the work docs and just have it right there? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I'll do that. The Discord channel is going to get buried someday. This thing, that's, that's a permanent record. Yeah. Because uh, we're keeping that all on the wiki. Um, next, Odundo, anything about audio mixer spec? Yeah, uh, so it turns out um, we're only going to need four microphones. Um, and I think we have a good uh, option. Just a $100 mixer and two 8-foot cables, because I have the rest of the cables, and that should do it. Um, and what do you do? You basically say switch from one mic to another? Um, they can all be on at the same time. Yeah, and how do you not get the noise? It's it's well, just because it's coming from one source. One it's source. Not, it's not hearing the okay. speaker and replaying what's being said. So it's like there's no oscillation and all that. <coughs> there's four mics. Four mics. Yeah. Um, they plug it into the mixer. Um, yeah, four mics should do it. Um, one like between people. Yeah, it should be a big improvement. Mm -hmm. So those mics do plug into the mixer and that yeah. handles the noise stuff? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you have a page on that on your log or anything? Or uh, no, can you I put it on your log or put a link to it? Yeah. Cool. Um, we mentioned the concept of pairing to do work. So today w what I'd like to do is <clears throat> get further on, okay, how do we design panels and like we've got the house Typically, Katrina and myself, we've de designed just a bunch of the panels. You guys are starting to do that. Now we can get into the exercise. If we understand positionality within the grid of the 32 by 16, 16 by 32 house, we can actually get into, okay, we know we've got placeholders and um, outline sketches for positions. So if we know where a wall is and where some of the features of the house are, we know the walls are 5.5 inches. We have that piece of information. We have 16 by 32. We have 121.125 as the second story platform from the base of the first. If we talk about sill plate, that goes negative because we started the walls at zero. We started laying the walls at zero, which means the sill plate is going to go negative and the foundation is going to go negative on Z. So if we, someone wanted to do that, we can do that, but you have to work in a plane that's a little negative. Like the sill plate, you'd start at a plane. If you're drawing that from scratch, you'd, you'd start at negative 1.5, which is the thickness of a 2x4. If you go to the foundation, you have to s start at the base, base of the footer. Or you can actually work in sketches. You can go extrude in a negative direction. So probably a useful thing for the foundation, since the bottom is complicated, it's, it's got like this footer thickened edge so a useful convention there would be you take the base negative 1.5 which is the bottom of the sill plate and use that as your surface and then extrude down which means negative when you do extrude it says reverse direction if you look at that dialog you have for extrude so you can do something like that so we're gonna be building like a, there's a few wall modules that are interior ones that are still left and there's Oh, I didn't check the check, uh, latest file. Can somebody paste the picture of the final file? And I think the progress has been pretty good. We're just getting that all filled in with the goal of completion, including like putting in the utility channels and electrical boxes by like this weekend. Uh, the biggest, most complicated thing is uh, I would say the utility module between the kitchen and bathroom because that's got plumbing in there. We actually do have the full plumbing which um, just for your reference let, let's let's take a look at that let me share my screen um, between the kitchen and bathroom there's a utility module the two the two and a half walls that are there they've got all the plumbing in there uh, let me share the screen so if, once again if we go to See home to CAD and index you'll see 
plumbing rough in. It's actually a did a lot of this detail because this detail was actually critical for where exactly the plumbing and the foundations you guys saw in real build where they go so there is a digital model already for the location of the the plumbing oh wait am i sharing the screen okay, okay. Yeah. um so for example just looking at these um these pictures here that's what's in there you see the two stubs this stub for the toilet and this other stub stubbing out and that little box that's <clears throat> in the real build that's right there um, but that's pretty good but then there's walls there that this is between the kitchen and the bathroom so those walls actually have the vert so let's say the vertical pipe here that's in the wall it's actually in the wall um, so is this drainage pipe that's the sink for the kitchen and stuff like that that's we're going to have to design walls around that um and i'll probably i'll do that it's pretty complicated there it's uh because you've got to have penetrations of the plumbing like going around the wood we're going to make that module not two by fours but two by sixes so that you can easily go up to the second floor of this because we're actually pre-plumbing if we do the 2000 square foot addition the thousand in the back it's going to have a bathroom on the upper floor. So we're actually going to continue this, this pipe here upwards to the second floor and just stub it out there, end it under the floor, but ready so that when you are wa wanting to put in a second story bathroom for a family, say you expand from 1,000 to 2,000 square feet, you've got that ready so you know actually in the, in the floor exactly where that is. So you pull up a little latch or cut it out. I don't know if I'm going to just... Uh, pre-frame that or just you know when you're ready for that you just cut out at a very well-known location so when you're cutting out you can say okay there it is we know it because it's in a digital model and we actually have it uh, digitally designed uh, so that's that's that part the other thing so from yesterday's lesson uh, let's see day 10 I'm, I'm actually returning to day 10 we started looking at uh, actually we so can uh, was building module number 69 the last one but the but what you can see in a in a model is that you've got the location of the staircase well around that staircase are walls so we can use things like the staircase to locate other walls we know that the other wall that goes in between the two rooms starts exactly at the staircase so let's let's actually look at that model and take a look at what that process for if you want to start filling in those walls what it would look like and it's about understanding the, the rationale for how like where do they end where do they start where do they end where exactly are they left and right back and forward right so this is like getting into design where you allowing obvious things like walls the interior panels are going to end at the exterior walls right you're not going to leave a gap between the exterior walls and a panel you're not going to leave a crack in your wall you're going to put it right up to the to the wall you're not going to go farther because the exterior wall is in the way and for example for the the aperture for the this is the, where the stairway is going to be well it makes most sense to put the wall panels right on the edge so then once you put siding on that on those panels you got this nice continuous flat surface going down the hole the stairway and as far as panel 69 and 68 they're partial panels because two panels fit around the staircase. The staircase is 10 feet. Well, that's going to be about two and a half panels. Well, exactly how much? Because, you know, how do you bend around that corner? Well, you look at the cat from above. So let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at the actual cutout. And that pretty much determines where all the interior walls go. If you also, you also have to uh, look at the floor plan, which we have in very rough shape in here that's the first floor second floor okay so you're basically dividing into one and another room this wall here the mid wall is determined exactly by the location of the staircase end and this wall these walls here 66 67 68 69 go around staircase so with that knowledge, if you also know, okay, well, there's a door there, a door module, and we're going to butt that door module right next to 66. 62 and 65 are doors. 
Well, you can locate those doors exactly uh, based on if you 60 and 61 are also four foot panels. If they start at the wall, they end up at a certain place, which determines where the door is. Uh, so we can let's go into the digital model and actually take a look at that. So, so if you want to take a look at that or download this, this is uh, it's the link is in today's document, so you can actually explore that uh, on page. Uh, day that's day eleven. That's day ten. It's right here. Staircase walls file. Let's bring this entire slide over to today. So I'll paste that right into today's doc. So if you go to day ten, um, day eleven, it's right there. You can download that file, and then if you view it within FreeCAD, you can actually orient. So you look at straight from the top. You can take all kinds of measurements. But the exercise there would be, what would, how would you want to design? Okay, so we, we took a look at these two modules here. Ken picked out, we picked out this. And now we got to do this one here. So, um, <clears throat> and you know that the spacing, so for the joists, that we're, at, we're 24 inches on center. So we kind of went through people who built the joist hanger locations. You know that they're 24 inches. So you know that there's going to be like this cat is actually accurate right now. It's 24 inches. So therefore, this wall panel right here, that's going to end up in the middle of this joist and this one. So this looking from the side, just to orient yourself. This is where we're at. Um, that's looking from the top, the the side here. So you see, this is the staircase. The staircase goes. So this is the outside door here going to the carport, and then the staircase goes up towards um, towards this side here. Um, there's a little landing platform on the first floor here, and the stairs go up. But we can pretty much locate all these walls. So here we can locate, okay, there's a four footer right there. Yes, we can locate that there. The first one is just a rough place holder. I just did that real quick, just extruded a thing up that's going to be 96 inches, minus 3 eighths. Um, so now we can, in principle, get all these, all these wall modules next to each other here. So, for example, um, how do we do that? What would you do to get, like, you can take this module right now, and if somebody wants to do the full detail of that, take it into a separate document and actually work the detail. That's a full four foot module. Uh, if that is not done in, so if we check out our completion spreadsheet, that's going to be above number 48. Well, I want to look at, no, the CAD. The, I want to see if what's in the red still, because we want to fill in those interior modules. So. Um, above number 48 is going to be oh look at that that's that's cool somebody I noticed somebody did that one um, so we're going up to here set first floor interior that's after 48 second floor interior uh, we've got 63 64 we don't have anything for 60 61 62 we've got three modules there and a lot of that is not done uh, there's two, four, six, seven that can be done. And according to orientation here, yeah, all these ones, we did like 64, I think, then 66, 67. But the doors we could do and all these other ones here, maybe we did 60 and 61. But 63 and all these, all these other ones are going to be determined, like the generally self-determined. So you take, okay, the door we're going to make 48 inches because you want to keep door standard. You don't want to mess around with door sizes. Um, but you're not going to have exactly 12 feet 
to here because of the thickness of the panels. So one of these panels is going to be shortened up to just de de decide which one that is. So we say there's going to be a door here. So what do we do here? If you want to determine the door location, so one thing is determine the locations. And then once you know the location, you can do a dummy file like this one and take it into a new dock and actually make it for real by, by drawing out the studs and everything else. So let's, let's do this one as an example. We can control C on that one. Just simple. I'll take the sketches with it. If you open up a new new document, and then we're actually on the still on the X Y plane, right? Because we're gonna now it's it doesn't make sense to do X Y plane when you're actually doing the detail. You want to be looking at it from the front. Uh, so you want to be looking at it from the front, like this, right? So you can draw out all your studs and everything else. But what you can do is simply copy and paste it. We we would like to select the sketches, yes, uh, if you want. Um, so just go into a new document. Control V and then you're gonna make it fit all. View fit all. So it wants to put it, it's somewhere at that far location wherever we put it. So this is now your individual module that if you save this, it's already in a positionally correct location. So that's convenient right now. We're at the state where we are. So now you can take this and start doing the detail. These are two by fours. What's the height going to be? The height is going to be exactly your... Can you mute? Can I mute people? No? no they got to mute themselves? If you right click on the name, you should be able to mute them. Okay. Yeah? But you're muted still. Okay. Now it seems to work. Um, you go back here. You can read the height because we did this in XY plane, so you can actually read the height as 95.625, which is basically the full eight footer pre -cut with pre cut studs. So you've got this. It's a correct placeholder for that first module. You can now work it. So maybe uh, uh, what I should do, like this is already information. We should save it. So this is which well module? It's going to be 66. And let's make sure we don't have 66 already right it'll be 66 right here so I would want to upload it to right here just as a placeholder first file where we can say okay this is the location of it so 66 and then upload it here So there we have it, and then we can go into the detail of, of how, okay, that always tells me this thing. What's it say? That it's got the Sweet Home 3D file. No, ignore that. Just upload it. Uh, so one person could develop this, and we can likewise get extru extract uh, this module, this module, this module. How, There's the, how did you extrude them up from the... That's, that's an XY sketch. So how do we do one of them? Let's do a sample one. Can somebody else describe how we do that? So I want one of these other modules there. In posi like, say I want this one, this one right here, this corner. How do I do that within this document? So I get the positionally correct placeholder from which I can work and then merge back into this document. We'll just trash this here. We'll, we'll delete that and then in uh, merge the new one. So how do I do this one? Uh, but say I didn't have the sketch yet. How do I? How do I know where it is? What's the verbal instructions for that? Wait, you don't have the sketch yet. I do have it, but say I wanted to do this one because I think that's what Ken's asking, right? Oh, I changed the sketch or work and create a new sketch. Yeah, at what height? What and what plane? 
What is the plane we're working in? Yeah, for the placeholder we could do X, Y, because we're going to extrude it vertically to, into the Z. So, okay, so I do this. I'm going to do a new sketch. And, and did it this way. So I want that sketch to be there. But um, le before I do that sketch, let's put it up. Remember, like this offset, the magic number there was 121.125 from memory. That's, that's where, now I'm at the second floor actually, right here. Uh, so now if I draw this here, and what's the size going to be of this? You know, this is 48, because we, we decided, well, you can tell, it's between the two, two joists, that's going to be 48. And what's this height here? 3.5 for interior walls, 2 by 4s So all the walls are interior that are, uh, are interior, they are 3.5. So we can just do that and, and put it in the middle, and there you have your position. Now you could extrude it to 95.625. So where did that go? That's view, standard views, fit all. So we just did that. And now you can take this module here and put it into 67. Is that 67? Um, 67. Yeah as a rough placeholder which we can detail out for the full digital model because we're going to open that up and there's utilities in there there's going to be some electrical so we got to get the detail so we can put in other details later on including the sheeting and stuff like that so we can do that we can do this this uh, these two corner ones which are not done we can do this is going to be a door here and the question is okay how would you want to do the door would you want to put the door okay so if we do a, a sketch there one to one point one to five. So little questions like how how do you work around the corners? I mean those are basically wherever you meet upon something else. This is like okay what's happening there? That's the trick, right? So are we going to put this something like this? Um, or so that's going to be once again like your three point five for the interior panels. This is going to be forty eight. This is a door module. Uh, so that's going to be 48, but where is it going to go? Is it going to go like this? Or is it going to go like this? Do we care? Well, I don't care. Do we care? If that's the, what are the considerations there? I mean, you're coming really matter. Yeah. Well, and when you walk up, you're like right a side right by the side of the door yeah when you if it's if it's where it was previously I think right there was. so if you want this no would this be good I don't think that's favorable for what reason this is now getting to interior design so so this is favorable for what reason it's out of the way of you coming up the, the stairwell and, yeah and it's joined with the other wall that's around the stairwell at least, um, you zoom out so you can see the contact. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there. You, like you have, the op you have more open space. Yeah. That way it seems like in the room, it's more. The room, you shrink up the one on the right just by three and a half inches, but that doesn't matter so much. We kind of like this. Let's just do this. I um, can't. I can you hear all that's being said, but wouldn't we also want to look at just the distance between that panel and, and the exterior wall to decide if, like... Well, we know if, we're going to have to shrink one because the wall thickness makes us have to shrink things. I see. So okay. this is 48. We can't fit three 48s, and you can kind of see it. There's not even enough room for three of them because there's the wall thickness here and the wall thickness here that you got to subtract. So, but let's just roll with this. So, uh... So what is the, uh... Or what, what do you think? Uh, I'd say that. And then, how would you verify this? What I would do is, uh, since Katrina has got the full technical model, we want to look at some of our other documentation, which is, uh, say, it's actually in a CAD part library. There's some, there's a cutout of the wall modules uh, somewhere down. I think I've seen it. Some of the details below the panels. Um,
staircase wall, for example, right here. Uh, so if you look at that, the way Katarina had it gone, yeah, it's, it's that, what we did. We're right, like she didn't want to put this on a corner. Um, the advantages is you're like farther, just a little farther from the staircase so you don't like fall down the stairs if you fall out of your room or something. I don't know. But I don't know. I don't see a particular reason outside of the trim detail here where now you have uh, the entire staircase being clean. Otherwise, you'd have the edge of that door module there in the staircases may not look as clean. I think it's more about like look detail. Yeah, I mean, you I'd have say the, what is it? it's the the thickness of the wall, so it's the to account for the stairwell. So if it was on the outside where it was, you'd have the extra um, width of the wall, the thickness of the wall, the three point five. Well, but there's no physical reason why you can't put it like in one or the other location. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think it would work either way. Just yeah. Well, let's just keep it to, so we're consistent with the rest of the, the sweet home, so we put it there. And then the next one goes next to it, that's going to be a four foot, and I think we have that because I knew that, oh, we have that one, we know that's four, and this one next to the wall is going to be adjustment because it's shorter anyway. So make that the adjustment. We talked about adjustment modules. Modules were one of the studs you just screw in lightly, so that you adjust it like maybe half inch up to like half inch so you fit exactly against the next wall. But from this kind of logic, we can actually get the exact locations of all these modules here. So for example, this one I'm going to save as a placeholder because it's already positionally correct. So I'm going to go, let's go into the, the new dock. So I just put it into this new dock, and it looks just like the other one, but it's in a, it's got a different information, it's in a diff different position. So this is actually a good placeholder for 67. So let's save it as 67 here so that we already have a placeholder. For 67 down here on the second story interior. So 67 right here and just do that as a quick start so we can continue right on this process uh, that way we can do <clears throat> yeah so we got that upload it and then what's the what's the interior of it identical to what we've been doing with it's that 14 inch spacing between the there's gonna be utility channel on the bottom so we need the bottom blocking at what location remember that number the block that we used there was 8.5 so there's blocking on the bottom for the utility channel, no blocking on the top. So you can pretty much, from the knowledge you might have, if you remember all of this, you can say, okay, now I can do the technical detail of this module. You can take that. Use, oh, what you do there is do this. Appearance. You know, make it semi-transparent. So it's there, but you work, work on it. And so you do your sketches. On it. Now, if you do the sketch in the, in the now, you, you look at the coordinate axis, it says it's in the XZ plane. Well, what happens? You, you got to do the XZ plane. Well, you'll notice that at the end of the day, you're going to have to move your We don't know where that is until we get like to know where it is. So we've got the, so. So you see, first of all, it's going to have the origin right there because this is positionally correct. So it's going to be way out here. But you can s just start by saying, okay, I'm going to do the top plate here, which is going to be 48. So this is uh, the workflow where you start from positionally correct orientations. And now you're filling in the detail in a mass collaborative workflow. Once again, I emphasize this um, because of the ability to transform culture into collaborative development of products in general. Like the concepts here are actually very, very basic. Uh, so as long as people are aware, and also if you have access to rapid learning construction set modules like Legos, this becomes trivial for anyone. So with that kind of process, you've got the engineered modules, you've got the micro factory, 4,000 square foot micro factory in Kansas City that produces one of these per week. You've got the game where people can practice that before they actually build and that attracts attention. Um, you've got the engineering 
the codes, the R&D on a code submission to the building department, well, if Kansas City's done the first one, they rubber stamp the next one. You don't have any work there. So all those costs are eliminated. The other thing, so right now we're looking at the 50 slash 50 revenue model, 50K for materials, 50K for labor. If we do a turnkey build, I believe I can, from what I know about the build ergonomics, give me 50K, I'll build it for you right now. Um, we can do that. We can even, once we have the very detailed instructionals, we can say, okay, just hire somebody to build all your mod modules for you. So if we talk about, we publish this house, we get 12 product orders. 12 to 100 product orders. Well, what we could do immediately is hire a few people to, once we build the, fa the micro factory here, an exact replica which can go into KC or any city, once we build that here to show, okay, we show the workflows here, we show that we can do one, one per week. One per week would require 12 people because 12 people times um, eight hours per day is 100 hours per day. So in five, in four days, I believe, actually four days, I think we, we can do it. Uh, you can crank out a kit. That's definitely high value economics. If you do this kind of model in Kansas City and then you have a sweat equity model like, like Habitat, I could definitely see Habitat does 400 hours sweat equity for the people that get a house through Habitat. 400 hours is enough to build this entire house and then you need to install the modules. Installation of the modules I see as 5K. If you want to do a professional crew, outsource it. There we go. So we have an operation in Can here, Kansas City. We are we have the access to the micro factory. You can do the sweat equity model with a client, your customer who builds to own at low cost. And that package I could see being like, uh, if they build it, if they put in those hours, we were counting like 400 hours times 50. That's twenty thousand dollars. They just took 20k off their ticket price so I could see the the model working at 75k in the sweat equity model like habitat then you'd have to get funding for it. it's just some ideas about economics but I think I think the 75k could be realistic you have to get land and and utility connections on top of that now the land if you're working with a Kansas City land bank they want affordable housing so you probably get that at low cost or free that's just the concept but um, the way this relates to this CAD here is like okay we can publicize we can create, turn the, the CAD design into public engineering, like public design through low cost access tools like FreeCAD or the game or augmented reality, virtual reality, all that stuff, training for people to build that rapidly. We just had, got access to that in Kansas City through UMKC, through Jesse and, and their group there. They, they have built a $35 million center where they, ha where they have that infrastructure. So we can as one of the prod, uh, side line, uh, well, some of the infrastructure required to, for this to scale, create those assets of augmented reality training materials. Should we check out like a uh, VR headset? Yeah, we could go down there we, anytime if we want to. Uh, they've got they got a full facility for doing that there. We could if we want to. So, um, so this all it's all about accessible tools, making processes. Um, uh, accessible to public participation but right now and what, what I just did right here uh, let's just go back right to the CAD but what did I do here so notice I did that pad but it's like oh man it's way off so I don't know where it should be but I can look from another another location and I can take this graph here and um, let's see what's its position so in the part tree that's the sketch that sketch there what's its location well we're gonna need to change the uh, now, if we go to view two, that's the X, uh, sorry, the the green there is the X direction. So we got to change the X axis for it to align on top. So you're actually drawing the, the sketches and actually drawing it in position. Otherwise, you have to move it all over later. Um, either works. I think it's easy in one case to move it over once you're done working in a in this plane that we're in right now. But if you want to guarantee overlap later, like, I don't know, I would just work it right there. So I would just change the X. Probably it's like, I don't know, 120 or so. No, that's wrong. Why? Sorry, why? Um, <clears throat> thanks. So what is it, 120? It's not that, it's 130. I just kind of have to overlap it. 
And okay, so there's an interesting artifact. Oh yeah, so I probably didn't draw it accurately enough to overlap. So let's just correct that so we're we're a little better there. So we got that as 48 inches, and this one we got as 1.5. So now we can, you know, when we look at it, just go back to where we were before. We're zooming out here, and yeah, we got it close. So that sketch is should be like what? If you look at two, we just we just line it up uh, through this the data points. It's gonna be like 140.5, 0.4, 0 0.4. We can keep zooming in to get the the exact. Um, shouldn't it be like 0.5. No, that's definitely too much. Um, so this might be a little, little inaccurate, but it's that's like about right there. That's as close as we need. It's 140.47. It's kind of a weird number. It should be a more regular number. Some of these inaccurate. It's probably like 0.5, but we're three hundredths of an inch off because of the way we drew our wall there probably well I probably drew this thing like 0.03 off and therefore it's a little inaccurate but for our purposes here it doesn't really matter because it's like you don't even see that in, in construction um, the only trouble is that now whenever you're typing in that number for position it's kind of a weird number there so that's the only drawback of that 140.47 number but so now anytime you make a sketch you will use 140.47 right there. But this I want to save because you can you can extract the information if you click on that sketch. So you got your you're starting on this module here. You got your sketch and you you work it. Now probably this is you know you're working positionally correct. It's one way, but it's probably easier to just go to the part library, download your header. If we have a two by four header, so you just go. You know this is this gets into you got to pay attention to these numbers for every single thing so it's probably easier to just go to your architecture part library you want to save useful parts and work in the XYZ plan because it's probably it's simpler to draw it there and move it over to the final position later because uh, depends what you like I mean if you like the parameters and you think that's easy to do that what I would do is go to architecture part library and just download these parts because now we're messing like it took us so long to get this header in place this uh, this top plate so I would go to architecture part library and just download uh, header, 8 foot header, bottom plate. Now this we all were doing for for 2x6 so you need another one so 2x6 here we need another part library for the 2x4 because now we're getting to interior walls so 2x4 part library here So we don't want to create that. It's probably the easier workflow to, to do. Uh, what we could do if we work collaboratively is once we get the header, and let's assume for all of us to really get the efficiency of work, all of us working, define that X, X, Y, zero plane, put the header in there, and then every person who uses that header, they can use it. Um, and then they move move the module into the final position at the end. That, that, that would be probably the preferred workflow there. Um, but along this route, uh, th so that's a way to, to generate the interior modules. As soon as you have one, uh, throw it up there and make it make it work. Okay, so that's uh, we can in principle, if you can follow what I said. Now we can start designing the interior wall modules. You have to think about it. There's a location to them. There's a very well defined structure. There's a well defined geometry determined by where they butt up into walls. The only thing like that we had to solve was that one corner. We said, oh, it's going to go on the inside of that stairway corner for the... Uh, so we have to use a little bit of logic. Like that's, that's like more like knowledge of interior design. What about this other corner? So I can point immediately to the other corner that bends around, which was... What about this corner here? Do we draw that correctly? Like how do you tell if that's right or wrong? Or it should be this overlapping which one should overlap which one if you do you understand the question can you, can you zoom up to the exterior wall yeah so we're here and the on the second floor the this part that's the carport here 
that's the yeah that's that's that wall there uh, this this other boundary of the so does it matter well you've already moved the walls out a certain distance yeah and so it's a standard four foot module so my next question is is it a standard four foot module it kind of if you moved it out further it just kind of waste space on the in that room because you're not really you're taking away you're adding more room for the staircase and you're taking away well you can't go into you can't fall make this go off the staircase so the staircase is defined right there no it's in the right position left and right here you can't move it left and right question is are you gonna overlap it here more over this this one or does does this panel overlap this one or does this panel overlap this one like on the corner here see what I'm saying yeah I, I don't think it matters too much I mean I don't know I don't see a compelling reason for one way or the other I might see that for looks purposes you probably want this because otherwise you'd have this black the edge of this wall module against here so you've got this instead of like a whole flat plain wall you've got this edge of this one which maybe just looks wise doesn't look as good is it structurally better to have I mean it's it's probably really small but to have the weight of that wall module over the joist too because it's right over the joist versus if you overlapped it the other way it wouldn't be on top oh yeah okay that's a good reason too there yeah, I like that reason. You're, you're spanning the joist if you do it this way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd go with that as a structural reason. So there's logic. So you have to use basic logic to say, okay, structure, geometry, location, etc. So that's, okay, let's do that. Now these sketches here, that's just one sketch, so we got to redo that one. Um, okay. So we can, in principle, start working on these things. The door detail, uh, we have to de devise. It's a little beyond our skill set at present, unless you study the exterior doors and make the structure for this door somewhat identical, except you don't need headers because these are not load-bearing walls. We already have structure. We needed headers because on the first floors, like whatever modules we had like this ex this placeholder door header because you got the weight of the roof on the everything above on it this is load bearing these long sides are load bearing interior walls except for the ones under the staircase like the bottom staircase uh, we're actually making the bottom of the staircase structural because that's gonna support these short joists here so what goes under this this is going to sit on top of our interior walls and that's going to be actually structural that's the only other struct that's the only structural interior wall in this design um, but otherwise we don't need and there is no doors there it's just frames but otherwise the interior doors are similar but they don't need headers that's all uh, so we can if you know how if you study the say the exterior door then you can copy that design, except we don't have exterior siding, we have interior siding and stuff and like little details, but you can pretty much logic out, okay, you need these side studs to hold the door frame. You've got the one above that holds the top of the door frame so you can screw the door frame into this hole that you make. Things like that, so you can kind of think about it. Um, okay, so let's just move on to another last topic here. So let's talk about quality control. So what we're doing with the with the uh, here quality control checklist how do we know that our model here and I can point out to a few things here in what we're doing so I looked at the file yesterday and this is what I came up with yesterday so I'm studying it how do we know do we have the final file that we're working on all correct so somebody should be managing this and by the way does somebody want to manage be the manager of the final assembly to look for quality control and make sure like if somebody's somebody's got either a faulty model a misplaced model 
or whatever, does anyone feel like they want to take that role? I could do that, but if anybody wants to do it. Here's, so I'll teach you a little bit about what you look for. First of all, so the problem statement. How do I know the files that we're putting in there are clean, like we don't put any extra trash in there? How do we tell it's positionally correct? How do you design? How do you tell the design is accurate? Well, for that, you have to know about design. Positionally correct, you can just determine. We've got the, the, the location markers. How do you identify edit conflict? So maybe like there's, how do you know that people never conflict? Because it's possible. Like you could be, you could have downloaded an old file. Somebody downloaded that same file and already uploaded it, and there's a conflict. How do you tell? Okay, so here's how you tell all this stuff. Quality control checklist. First of all, for conflicts. Conflicts are perhaps the biggest thing we have to manage in terms of time sync. So if the time of the upload is close, like within five minutes, then just verify that uh, no, an overwrite has not happened. So here, for example, I look at, I look at this one. I saw this and then there. Look at that, 1537, 1538. Well, what I can tell you is that Canon prints will have to have coordinated and how do you coordinate you coordinate by downloading uh, like here it would be good like if you saw this can should go hey Prince uh, did, did you or maybe like verify that Prince's file and see like was he working from the old file like if that whichever one was first this one Prince was first so can before you did that did you download Prince's file because it's very close it's one minute he just did it one minute before you if not, then you're doing a, we're doing a conflict, so we need to correct this. So the procedure is before you upload, look at the timestamp of the former one, see if you, you have worked from the most recent one. You have to keep track of that. Because if somebody already did something, that's great. We're already forward, moving forward. But move from the latest version, download that latest version. Okay, so that's edit conflicts. Um, now, of course, the easy way to do this is to lock it, but we're saying our philosophy here is we're going to have thousands of people collaborate in real time, and we go are going to cultivate a shared understanding of the process to the point that this is self-manageable. That's the goal, and that's the bigger discussion between project management software and doing mundane things like keeping logs and lo just logging on the wiki and the simple common understanding because I actually don't think that any project management software can do better than the shared understanding of awareness of a thousand people like for example yes project management software is good and should be used but I don't believe you can scale a project management software to handle like 2,000 people working on this in real time I don't think so but what can work is a simple log the awareness that okay people are uploading files to certain locations there's a list of people who are working on things. Um, it's more for the fact of how do you manage that everything gets reposited, is findable. Um, you can put that into project management software to say, oh, okay, these are where the assets are and here's how you find them, navigate that. But once you get to a sufficient number, I think the only way you can really do it is by logs. Like here's your work log and things like that for the duration of like say 10 years down the road someone's probably going to have taken down that project management suite thing or whatever it may not be findable but you have to consider scalability in size and time you have to consider time scales and magnitudes of teams time scales we're assuming here at least my assumption is that we're doing long-term development that rivals anything out there in the proprietary world that's a long-term project it's on scale of years, decades, and centuries. So this wiki potentially lives on eternally, right? So it started now, but 10 years from now, I know we were working on it, so we're working on that version of the micro track. Maybe we want to go back to it. Well, the only way you can find it effectively is by, I think, through logs. I mean, I don't think anything can beat a log. If people have the awareness that that's how it works. Um, so it's really the question, like, if people understood that logs exist and how they work, then that's an autonomous managing system. I don't believe you can substitute like the individual responsibility for collective management. 
it's just like with democracy. Uh, the best government is no government, but nobody has done that because people are not responsible. Like if everybody was 100% responsible, then you wouldn't have government, stuff like that. But I think the same metaphor applies here. If everyone is responsible to a basic level of accountability to transparency, logging, and so forth, you don't need the overhead that has to be placed upon it to organize it for various reasons, because it tends to get centralized, it becomes unscalable, it breaks down at a certain scale. So that's the general principle about um, like the way we work here. And this understanding this quality control at the level of, okay, here's the final assembly, this is part of it. If you understand how this works, you can pretty much self-manage without lockdown, without uh, resolving the con, you can, you can keep going like this, you can fork it, di different versions, uh, but I think this is the most open way to do it. Okay, so, but let's keep going. Uh, so second point of quality control. If file size does not make sense, verify what happens. So if it's too large or smaller than the last one, like how can the next iteration be smaller than the last one? It shouldn't. Under the assumption that the only way it could be smaller is if you reduce some detail. Well, if we reduce some detail, why wasn't the firm, former version that was there already reduced in detail? So you might want to go back to the module that was too detailed or whatever, or had too much stuff. Maybe you had sketches in there or whatever. So clearly there, for example, uh, there's a clear case of that. We went from 352 to 707 upon the addition of just one module. That's definitely a, a flag. This is likely too large because typically, and now Ken, Mc Ken, he went lower than 352, so he probably missed what Coder Jeff did there. So smaller than last, last and two files ago. So there's there's something wrong here, and there's something wrong between this one, and Ken's. Oh, let me see. So you have to reconcile. It. You have to go back and see. Okay. And that, so I downloaded Princes, and I saw that he had all the sketches and stuff, which was then like corrected in the later ones. But here, like if you blow up in size, that means you probably have all the other info in there. So that's that's file size considerations. Okay. Third point. Verify parts are aligned against their respective position markers. Use measurements to draw measurement sketches. So simple things like, okay, so I noticed in a file there was this. Why is there a gap between two wall modules? That shouldn't be there. Uh, I noticed this in one file. That's the edge, edge corner panel. Why is this corner not against the outside? It should be because we're defining the outside of the building. So those two things need to be corrected. So those are kind of things. Uh, now, uh, so last point is make parts transparent. So overall assembly is more easy to understand and therefore transparent. That's just like when you put in stuff into the, I noticed some of the final files. Once you get much more in there, keep it transparent because then you can see what's inside. Uh, I, that's a good practice just in general. So that's quality control. We can probably look at some other features of, of how this process works to make sure that it's correct. But someone has to kind of be on top of it. Like I'm kind of looking at, okay, does the net last file make sense? I haven't done it for the last file, but we'll just be aware of this and everyone can be the manager. So the, the answer to my question, can somebody manage this? No, we are all gonna manage this because we can understand a few things. It's impossible. Once it is, you're at a certain scale, it's impossible for a certain single person to manage. For scalability, there's no substitute for individual responsibility applies technically, politically, and all kinds of other ways. What else? You can ask someone else to review. Yeah, you can do, here. so again, to the pairing thing, is there any pairing exercise we, we could try on this this process? Uh, well, the, the pairing exercise that I was thinking of was one where uh, one person drives, um, and then other people can control the screen or mouse, like on Zoom, two people can edit. Savvy on CAD can actually, you know, get a few mouse clicks and enter in numbers and things. Uh, Zoom for CAD files? Well, Zoom has remote screen share. Like you can give someone control of your mouse and keyboard. Oh, cool. Oh, and that's actually very useful. Ooh. Yeah, so we could all edit the same CAD file, like together, like take turns. Like, oh, yeah. So okay. actually, we have a lock, like, okay, like, Odoo, you're driving, so no, everyone else, like, doesn't control the keyboard and mouse, and, you know, he's doing all the clicking, and then a few minutes later, we can switch to someone else. 
Ah, uh, okay, that's very useful. So in other words, like I could be, uh, I, I could say, Ken, uh, take over right now. Yeah. Can, we Can you repeat what was that? To... That's really useful. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, relieve the person of responsibility. It's kind of stressful if everyone's like watching. Like, oh, yeah. Okay, okay, we got to move to that. So let's, uh, maybe I'll just do, um, get an account. Can you repeat that, that version? I didn't hear it. Yeah, so we just said that Zoom has the capacity where, where basically remote desktop control, you have that where a person from the, who's on the internet can control your desktop. So that means that another person can be like, I, I could, for example, start the CAD, like what I'm doing, uh, whatever I'm doing on a CAD, I can do that. And then right now I could say in Zoom, okay, here now Ken has control over this so he can like do things on my CAD on my screen. Yeah, okay. Well, what I'll do is I'm gonna look at, let's let's have OSC get a, get an account there and let's try that like tomorrow or Is that now, or, a paid service though, I imagine? Um, no, it's a free, free Zoom. Does it still? It's just 40 minutes long. <laughs> uh, do we want to do that or that's kind of pain? Because no, I know like no, team no, viewer. Okay. Uh, is that something we can check, check out right now? But then again, so I've used team viewer. Let's see. What about like if we pair up pair up on Zoom with multiple Zoom, can you do multiple Zoom sessions where there's pairs doing their screens? Probably not, is it? You can have breakout rooms. You can have breakout rooms? That would be, that would be cool. Like, uh, we pair up and just work in pairs on this process. And then we can, when we talk to each other, um, then we get to learn. By explaining, we learn. So that would be, that would be a way to collaborate. Now, it's, it kind of brings up the need for an office space where you kind of have cubicles or like where the voice isn't traveling or like rooms, like breakout rooms um, physically so that when people are collaborating with each other, you don't have too much noise in a room. Is that true? So, like physically, like carve out this space here, for example. Yeah, or build new space, yeah. Well, I never recommend people move into more cubicles than they, they No. Are. <laughs> no. Um, but I, I agree. Like, we move into the uncubicle. Yeah. Somehow we're... Because if we're going to be doing that, like say we're actually pairing up and, and doing collaborative cat in pairs, we're talking to each other. Would that get too noisy in the room? No. Maybe hmm. some noise or sound issues there. Um, I mean, some of us can move. Yeah, we can. I mean, here we got. Yeah, yeah, we got some space that we could try that with. Uh, should we try a um, collaborative CAD exercise where we pair up and then maybe like work on these interior walls or something, or or what? Or um, well, we'll suggestions? What we'll start with? Uh, we can try what mob program is going to pair program with, like all of us together. Can okay. Try it together. Okay, let's do it. Let's let's share it. Let's do it. Can you do that? Send us a link in the chat. Yeah. And then we can tag team, which is kind of cool. Because, uh, wait, imagine this. Imagine you have a tag team computer left on all the time. As people come into it, they can do it, work on the same file. That'd be cool. And you divide that by many modules that you can actually do. Like, say we're doing this, and then there's a team, and, you know, Farther west, farther east, we kind of tag team. We got a big project to, to solve collaboratively as a large team. We can do that in a file that just just stays open the whole time, and people control a single single file or multiple files like that. They're like on ongoing continuous. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, stand standalone computer. Um, you might want to look at a team viewer for that because it has the same features. If Otherwise, you have to leave the Zoom meeting on all the time. But team like viewer? Here, you can just go and you know remote in to whatever PC set up and then just do whatever you need to do. And is it like, what's it run? Is it actually sharing someone's desktop, or is it is it like you gotta? It's it's like you it's the same thing. You control the desktop if you're remoted into it, but mm -hmm. it, you have basically full control of the PC. So, I mean, it's like. Just remote desktop on Windows. No security issues on that? Because yeah, well, there's, you share there's, that with? there's passwords and mm -hmm. there's other security features you can that are built in that you can use.
just to ensure that some other person doesn't just remote yeah. into the PC and you know. Mm -hmm. I'll get out of Discord. Or okay. mute yourself in Discord. Where do we find the link? Is, gen is that where we want to be? General voice channel? We kind of should select one, like one or the other, the apprenticeship versus. Sure, I, I prefer the apprenticeship channel. Okay, let's go. Let's all operate in the apprenticeship channel. There's there's Let's see, so what? Looks like it's working. Uh, so what now? So if you want to see my screen, um, mm -hmm. check your desk. Yep. Test. Martin, can you? Let's see. Where do I see where I got quit? Um, I killed, I killed Discord. Discord. That's music. Maybe I need to mute myself in Discord. You're muted. Yeah. You could uh, turn off your speakers. change to uh, auto accept all incoming remote control requests so we'll have the zoom control taskbar has buttons like mute stop video security participants chat 
new share, pause share, annotate, and then remote control should be the button that looks like a mouse icon on the far right, just before the dot 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 more. Um, so the way it would work is one person can, you know, who's the driver is controlling the mouse and the keyboard. And, you know, it's a security vulnerability. So people agree to be decent and not, uh, you know, take over each other's computers and delete files and read email and things like that. But we'll pick one person who's the driver and they request remote control on the host of the meeting. And then they can join the CAD. So, uh, Martian, can you request remote control? Okay, so I'm seeing, like, like, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing the triple, triple button, where is that request screen? So, so there's a menu of buttons? No, it's a different request. You have three on the button, you just have to push that. Oh, I see. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, when you have those buttons, like, with, that are highlighted in green or not, is there one that says remote control? No, there's, there's is there share screen. Is there options? Options. So, if the participants chat share screen record. No. Oh, I see. Yes, yeah, like if you scroll. Uh, View options. It's called. Yeah, sorry about that. I don't see the. I don't know what everyone is seeing. Or someone else who has view options. It can be it can be anyone. We'll take a turn doing it. Whoever has view options request for remote control. Okay. So it's waiting for Martian to control your screen. It's kind of ominous. <laughs> Oh, there you go. So now Martin is driving my computer, oh, wow. my hands off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can try a task. This is a, a bit older file, but maybe that's OK, because uh, a lot of the stuff that Martin is doing today, I can stand to practice to do again. So today in the workshop, you know, I wanted to make a interior wall module, but I find that there's no free cat file for it yet. Um, so maybe we can go through exercise just creating a, a place for <laughs> Uh, uh, so should, should we go, go to right, here? right here? Yeah, yeah we can uh, take turns. Oh. Can, you can you switch to three guys six? Uh, I can, yes. Well, actually, it, it may be too much trouble to, to switch now, so I, I won't like up. I will upload and save it. But. So, um, I would go to So, we want to do a we want to do a module like we did before, like say this corner module here, which we decided is going to go. That's pretty cool. Um, so let's see, do the key keys on my keyboard correspond to the same thing? Uh, yes. Yes, they do. Okay. So I'd go to orthographic view, which is VO shortcuts. Then let's start this module here. So we, we decided that this module was going to start. Um, so and according to. It's not letting you select because it has a Ghostbusters icon. Oh, yeah. We might have to select the body or make it the active body back in the model. Um, well, the block for me right now is FreeCAD 19 because I'm not super, I, I never use it, so I'm not used to, like, I would expect to click on this and it, I would be able to operate on it. Oh, sure. Well, I'll give you permission to host and you can host it on your computer. And mm -hmm. since you know how to do this, it's better for you to pick someone who doesn't know how to feel yeah. like they can practice for itself. So yes. I'll stop um, my share. Mm-hmm. And then... Martin, can you try... Uh, 
sharing your screen. Yes. Uh, again, the bot button at the bottom. On the menu bar. Post disabled participants screen sharing. So we can share desktop all together. Mm -hmm. So here I have my file, and then let's share this. So we just did uh, we just did this thing here. So let's have the next person do. the one that's right next to it okay so uh, this is we got 16 this so what we want to do is we want to do a sketch next to it just to get a placeholder file so that's the process we were talking about let's do it let's get a okay so here what we're finding out like like for example with this this corner here what we what we found out is the exact length and maybe, maybe that's, let's switch this exercise. We oriented ourselves in this file, and because I think it's going to actually take more time to work positionally correct after you extract it here, let's use this phase to say, okay, we found exactly what this module is going to look like, and then we'll just start a new document. Uh, let's start that. So let's design this whole module, but in a new document. So I'm going to go into that one. So should we get the coordinates, the positionally correct coordinates here? I was thinking that we don't, we just say we're measuring, just, we're just measuring this length. So we know it's this short module, but because we have to select all these, like I think it's much easier to orient, we'll just work on zero, zero coordinate for this module and move it into place. Is that work or do we want to do the workflow I was showing because it's in terms of number of steps it's probably going to be a little longer to work positionally correct after I you know say I extract this one from here and actually do it in another document I'm gonna to have to move this keep moving the sketches around that's that's the only problem so I'm saying my, my, I'm making a claim that if we just get size things like here we can say we, well we know this is just a plain 4 by 8 we can design it in a simple <laughs> XY position so we have those two choices which one do we want to do just get I would suggest a simpler route just for the simple exercise yeah just let's do the simple route. so we, all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a look at that sketch well yeah I'd also pause and ask one person to request remote control uh, it's up in the view options drop down it should be at the top of your screen it says re request remote control next to you are viewing Martin's screen. And then whatever it is uh, Martin you'd like to have yep. to do, you'll tell them verbally okay. and then they'll, they'll try doing it with your mouse. Excellent. So 26.75 is the magic number. That's from this sketch of what this wall module should be. Because we found it positionally correct in our technical file. Yes, this is at 26.75. So we're going to take that. Somebody take over and go into a new document and design that module. So we'll do tag team. So I'm going to close this. Well, who, want, who wants to go? Well, uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll, go I'll, ahead. I'll go, I'll go okay, go ahead. So start a new document here on, on my desktop here with this dimension. Okay, why is it done right now? Oh, I guess I should. Yeah, close that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now you create a new file, you're good. And let's actually close, close the 66, 67 down there so you're not getting confused. And the staircase walls too. Uh, just save it, save it, and then go from there. Control S, and then close it. Yep. And now you've got the plain file. We said what? Twenty six point seven five. Is that correct? So I should create a new sketch. Yeah. And because it's the simplest to just go X Y Z, X Y zero zero. I'll just go X Y. Um, well, yeah. 
I actually don't remember what was the plane we were working. We were actually working in X Z, right? Yeah. So maybe do that again. And you can click delete on a keyboard just to delete things. So yeah, let's do X Z and start and just do it at the origin. It is. Um, oh, I see. I see. X. Yeah. 101.125. Yes. Okay, good. Good point. Because I was going to work at the origin at the bottom floor, but yeah, that's where you want to be. 121. Yeah, you can change it at the 101.125. 121. Yep. Okay. Great. And then I want to edit the sketch. Yep. I'll double click here. I want to choose a rectangle. Um, this is the top view. And since I press to right, so this is offset array. Menu for. How do I tell which view I'm in? Like, I can press one, two, three. Oh, I see. The different views, but I'm not sure which view I'm in right now. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, well, I guess at the bottom there's axes, and so it looks like I'm in XZ. Yeah. View from the front. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, that's the one. So, if you close out of that, you can rotate the sketch to. What can I just draw? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do the base plate, which is how long? That's it. What you want to do is make the origin, snap it to the origin there, probably. Yeah. But also note that you, you're you at the right floor, but you're not at the right position left and right. So you're going to have to move this anyway. Sure. But, yeah, let's just continue. Uh, make those points co-align the two points. So this, this that, point constraint? Uh, the first one, coincident point. You have to select two points. So select the bottom left corner with it. Uh, zoom in, because you kind of you got all that stuff in there. Zoom in, and yeah, you got those two points selected. Make them coincident. There. Now, constrain your lengths. That one was how long? 26.75. So 46. 26.75. Yep. 0.75. Just 0.75. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's short. That's a short, about two feet because that whole uh, staircase hole is 10 feet, so you got two floors and about two feet left, but a little more. Okay, now the vertical. So, so normally I would come here for a while, but this, this is just Yeah, exercise. oh yeah, I'm so next control. person. I also, okay, next person. Um, I'm okay. <coughs> no, I'm sorry, I now kind of, requested I still have oh. I approved can the last what you want to do next do it again okay. sorry try it again request it again hmm? uh, I'm controlling okay you have to I guess quit controlling it but okay. just okay. go ahead all right. I'll do that. Okay. 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 Approved for Dundo. All right. Now. Uh, I see a little artifact down there. You want to maybe get rid of that one? Wait. You're not doing it yet. I'm doing it. Um, why am I doing it? If I just approved you to share. I don't think mine works. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not. I can't control your screen. The, can you, if you it, press the option to say re request remote control, or let's say you're already controlling it? It says I'm. It says waiting for Dundo to control your screen. It says I'm controlling it, but now I, you are. Oh, it's oh, very it slow. Yeah, <laughs> you you are. Okay, so okay. you see that artifact on, uh, like down there? Get rid of that first. Zoom in and get rid of it. What is that? That's an accidental <laughs> hiccup there. So. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, like, select it all at one time with a box around it. Just click, right, left click. Yeah, or you just uh, delete the individual ones yeah, and click delete. Okay, you can click on those things until it gets green, and then you click the delete key. Yeah, I'm clicking twice, but it's just it's not working. Yeah. Yeah, but you gotta make it green first. You not you didn't select it. When you wait, um, why am I still able to? Yeah. This. Well, you're the host, so you're. I can still control it. So you're always able to control, but for the purpose of collaboration, you should direct Odoo and not try to do it yourself. I know it. You know, it seems like. Oh, I see. Oh, I'm still, still controlling it. Okay. Well, you're I still able to. Okay, so there you go. So now that got green, click delete, and now repeat for the other ones. Uh, Just click the back, the delete key on your yeah, keyboard. Yeah, pressed it. You pressed it. Mm. Yeah, the delete key will work for me as well. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't. Maybe it was remote. It's just not gonna work. Yeah. Okay, keep okay. going. Edit. Edit. If you go to edit, what? Edit. Oh, you go to the edit menu? Yeah. I can't yeah. even see that. Yeah, I don't see anything. Yeah, it's, it's not there. Whereas, um, oh, right. yeah. uh, can we open up that menu like where? Uh, tools? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. View? Oh, yeah. Which toolbar is that? Uh, it's it's yeah. edit menu, so it's one more, one over. At the top it says file edit view, so you want to choose edit. And yeah. edit? Oh, it was off the hook because you drag it to everyone else to toggle edit, edit mode. Drive. Or yeah. is that what we do? Okay. So toggle edit mode. Now I should be able to. Well, nothing is selected right now. Yeah. Well, if you, yeah. If you double click sketch again, then you'll be in edit mode, and then I think you can delete that artifact. Uh, double click on it. You need to double click on a sketch because now you're not editing the sketch yet. Well, it's green, so I think it is selected. No, it need, it's going to turn back to okay. double click it like that. Now it's editing the. Okay. Click on it until it appears green and then de I just delete to, key. I have to click it three times. Wow. I think, okay, I think it's too slow. It's oh, maybe. Um, delete. Oh, I see. Um, how do I get this? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's make that easier. Let's put that edit menu. And I mean, let me just. Uh, so view. Where is that thing that it's? What am I missing there? Workbench, view, panels. Um, selection view. Report view. No, that's the bottom thing. Um, so what I would do is do that. And now, can you just do, click delete on your side? Waiting for Dundo to control your screen. Dundo is controlling your screen. And then you just delete. Yeah, but I delete menu. Mm. Always hit delete key. Okay, so you, you did that, you cleaned it up. And so now you can close if you want to stop editing, or you can add a constraint, like a, to the vertical. Add a constraint to the vertical. A left mouse button to, to, to scroll down. If you do left mouse button. Wait. Let's see. Um, no, like oh, sorry. Right mouse button to move it around. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. To move it.
to pan. Right mouse button to pan. So I'm trying to change the length here. Yeah. Um, yeah. You want to zoom in? Yeah, zoom in. That's cool. And you can select it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got that thing. Um, okay. If you did a, <laughs> if you have a freewheeling mouse, what are you using there? I'm using the trackpad. Trackpad. Um, uh, I don't recommend the trackpad. Really get a mouse. Uh, no, okay. What do you think that is? I forgot the length. 1.5. Okay. You you're looking at head on. You're looking at the front of the module. You're doing the base plate, so it's 1.5 by that thickness. So looking from from it, it's the 1.5 thickness okay. and 3.5 deep. But the 1.5 3.5 deep is the next step. For Mr. Makunga. Switch okay. to to Ken. So I'm going to give up. Okay, you can edit. Well, why don't you uh, extrude that to what thickness? Where do you think you're going to extrude it to? So two by four, yeah. So it's three point five. Three point five inches. So you can close. You gotta close. Let's close that to get out of edit, and it's gonna light up. Just click on the yellow pad in the up there, upper left there. The yellow pad is gonna extrude it, and it's gonna let you yellow pad mm -hmm, that thing, and that's gonna allow you to select the length, and that will be three point five. That's a two by four. It's, it's the of a two by four. Not yet. Not yet. We're doing a base plate right now. We start with a base plate. Yeah, we actually didn't do it yet. But if we pick it, we'd have to move it over because we're not working at zero, zero, zero. So we're actually working in the at height on the second floor. So 3.5. Yes, now Wes, do the first vertical on the on the left left hand side. You could do the top plate, but then you'd have to fit it. You don't know where it is. But you can automatically fit the left left stud. Because you know it's next to it. So yeah, so stop. And then Wes. Okay, so you got to read. Okay, approved. Waiting for West control. You're controlling. If we want to make individual members start a new sketch, yes, on the X Z. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, but remember, he put it up at, at height there. You do the offset, right? Or no? You did you do the there, offset yeah. there? Or? I did. So I, I typed in 121.125, is that right? Yeah, except yeah. Note, note what we just did. The offset, if you're in the X Z plane, is going to be in a Y direction. So that actually doesn't make sense anymore. But keep it because then that's the only way you're going to be in the same plane right here. But we can make it an object and move the whole thing later. Right? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. So 
Mm-hmm. And people watching don't, don't do the awesome thing <laughs> that I did. It also says meeting one in 10 minutes. I think that's <laughs> enough for the group exercise. So Wes can finish making the left set, and then Zoom will automatically log us all out in 10 minutes. So we'll operate the paid plans, but then we'll also enter in. Let's close it and let Joshua take from here. Uh, okay, yeah, we got we got ten minutes. And that's a one hour session. Like right click. Yeah, sorry, it's lagging. Okay, yeah. so we got that one. Yeah, I agree. That's probably not great. Um. No. Click it and then then Joshua. Can we give it to Joshua? Okay, Joshua request it. Approved. Controlling. So make the right lens. I want you to do the bottom, which is going to be how long? The bottom length is going to be how long? It's like... What do you think it's going to be? The bottom of what's highlighted now. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about putting it, because once you change the lens later, it's going to kind of shift on you probably. So select the bottom length. And then once you do that, give it to Prince for the vertical length. You could do either the bottom or top that will constrain it. Yeah, for uh mm -hmm. use the dimension yeah, length constraint. Yeah, there's the icon up is up there in the red. So length constraint. Yep. Is oh, make it 1.5. This is a 2x4 also. 2x4 right? on edge. We're looking from the front. Okay, Prince, do the vertical height. Approved. Waiting for Prince to control. Controlling. So what's it, what is that going to be? If we make it accurate. So, sorry, just, but just up here, these are the icons that you don't have to go into the menus, they're right there. So choose whichever one you want, but go ahead. Vertical distance. So that distance is? Uh, 95.625. We're now going in the vertical direction. Okay. And Paul, fill that in. Last step. Sure. See, it kind of shifted on you after you select location. So here, let me just zoom in and put it in the right place real quick because it's messy. Um, okay, so it's just about there. Okay, Paul, go ahead. I'll extrude it to. We're on edge for the vertical stud. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we've got that, and here we should name this. This is the bottom plate uh, in the in the menu here. We should do things like rename. So bottom plate, and it's got the sketches underneath it. And this one is the left stud. Call it left stud, and that's it. So we should save this because that's part uh, of module. What is it? Sixty-eight. So this is sixty-eight, and I'm going to upload this as a placeholder to sixty-eight. So that's good work there. It's it's not gonna be positionally correct yet, but we've got the correct dimension. So this is all good. Somebody can build that uh, later today, which nobody is. So sixty-eight. I know that was slow. Part of it is because all of us are sitting in the same room here and logging into a server somewhere else. 
in Europe. Europe. Well, no, not, not Europe. But this exercise would have been also like most useful for remote people, so people right now who oh, yeah. uh, are just watching at home because they know it's boring watching from someone else. So part of it, you know, always try to make it fun for yourself, and that's to volunteer and do things. Again, if you're driving, you have no responsibility. If you make a mistake, it's everyone else's fault as far as oh, everyone's man. That'll be fault. And, mm. and, uh, but for video recording, you know, we're all working on the same file. Yeah, absolutely. We did that right now. Like somebody can go from remote and just finish it right now before we even finish speaking here. Yeah. If we had that kind of level of awareness, like yeah. if I saw that, it's like bam, okay. And if, you know, if I had time and and my hand and and we know that, oh, okay, this actually needs to get done. This is real. We're building it today. So yeah. somebody who knows that, they'll be like, okay, bam, done, and you can move on. So that's how it could work. Awesome. Okay, that's a good exercise. Um, yes. Uh, okay, so just a last thing, just uh, last thing on the so so that was good, and that was good. And what are we do on this tomorrow? So so tomorrow, what's the next step on this, on this kind of exercise uh, to make it, put it to use? Well, normally uh, two people would do it together at the same computer. Like if we were here in person, all of us apprentices, we would like choose someone's laptop and just sit down, and we'd actually get up and change seats course move the laptop over so the next step would be you know picking one of the red files and, mm -hmm. and sort of like starting it together and everyone has different skill levels you know you know i definitely learned a lot by watching this and uh, i'm sure yeah a lot of cat beginners out mm. there, other people would have a lot of okay in doing this. absolutely so agree everyone knows something different so. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and is there a way to leverage this technique for faster, like, okay, so now we started to do it in pairs, and then can we take that so you have maybe, say, multiple breakout, well, I think the point of it is to, to sh see what everybody's doing, like all the different steps to learn, or... Uh, and also to get the work done, like, uh, yeah. it is to learn to fill in your gaps with knowledge, like I didn't know about the straight until I like, asked Wes a question um, mm -hmm. on the third day or something, but if we had been doing it together, he would have just mm -hmm. done it. Yeah, yeah, and I'm thinking like once we get a hang of it for production, so this is learning a lot about learning and and a bit of production. But for pure production, once people know this, uh, is this feasible cur with current technology to say we start this file collaboratively and all of us watch the start, so we get all oriented and we just break out and say there's like five pieces to it just all go into five rooms and get it done in like the next few minutes and then merge it together yeah m then merge it yeah merge it just merge it yep because everyone's working in, then in a position we started it so we get all oriented and that file gets uploaded so we know also where it went to so everyone's just situationally aware they can download it and multiple people can then break into rooms like say they can still be working in pairs to um, to continue learning would that be a use case or uh, yeah that definitely would I mean it's time constraints but we're all here focusing on the same thing uh, we're all going to get kicked out of this meeting probably yeah. in a few minutes but the paid account which I'll, I'll send the login credentials in the channel that does have breakout room support and it could be like we break now and Prince and I pair up mm. work on like the right stuff. Yeah. Joshua and Wes pair up and they work on the top plate positionally correct. Yep. And then we, um, someone merges, you know, we upload those files and someone mm -hmm. merges them all together. And yeah. The final wall 68. Yeah. To that process, I would still suggest to go to zero, zero, zero. Right now we worked off a little bit those coordinates, but then do that and then probably move it at the end so that it's easier to orient when you have multiple people working on it. So I think the practical outcome, let's think about ways that if we can think about, now that I see this, this is really cool. Uh, definitely, we, we should have used it at the very beginning if I knew more about this. Um, and then think about ways that you can see this leveraging this technique for bigger and better things as well like okay how does this scale actually for potential of large parallel design just think about it think of what are, what are the use cases excellent okay uh, so last thing here um, 
in today's agenda before we break out. Okay. I'm sharing. So here, uh, just last thing, uh, saw a thing on the on the table. Actually, safety. Let's talk about table saw. Actually, so I, Paul, I sent you that thing. Oh, I appreciate um, that. But look at that. Don't do this. Uh, mm -hmm. I saw that yesterday, and I, I couldn't cl clearly explain the reason for that. But the reason is actually clear. It's binding up. So if you look at this video here. Uh, uh, Hello and welcome to Exchange. Um, the Schneider Electric. You can take a look at the video. But the point is. Table saw is used for long, long cuts. See, availability, safety, and of course, sustainability. Okay. You want to capture a new so, opportunity. Um, table saw is used for long cuts. Um, if you do a cross cut, you can actually do cross cuts on a table saw like this. But note that they did not use the 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 what is it called the table? The, the, what? The, sorry, what, the rail. The fence. If you do the fence during this, you can bind up. Like if the fence were actually like, say the fence is on that side. If you pushing it through it, it can go, it can twist and bind up. That's a dangerous thing. It will kick back. So don't do that. Um, he's using the slide thing to do that, and that's acceptable. But never the fence. If you're doing something like this, but because this is like, man, your hands are mighty close to that blade. Like I don't feel safe doing that. Uh, have that kind of respect where you you see it. Well, of course your hands are not there, but if you slip or trip or something, some some strong wind blows on you, it's not good. So uh, use the cutoff saw on that. We also have circular saws, which are safer if you want to do a cross cut. You can also we got a bunch of circular saws too, uh, so you can do that as well. Uh, but table saw for long cuts. That's what you want to do. Save save yeah like this. Oh yeah, this is what you don't want to do. And you can see that in this picture. If once you are, yeah, he do, he doesn't show that because you don't want to do that. It just shows the big X. No fence there, because if it twists, you're binding up, and that's a strong kickback from all the force of the blade. Uh, if because it's gonna like catch, it's not gonna be cutting. It's you see that the thing it will twist on you. Um, so this end, he shows it in the motion here, like he shows the twisting motion. Um, it flies into narrower boards, but you'll also find it handy for cutting plywood and other larger sheet goods. A good rule of thumb is to use the rip fits for any board that's longer than it is wide. Making a cross cut, for instance, with a rip fence could cause the board to twist and bind between the fence and the blade, causing kickback. Again, use common sense here. When using the rip fence, your workpiece will almost always be against the fence and the cutoff part will be on the other side of the blade. This will give you complete control of the piece you're working on throughout the entire cut. Make yeah, um, we're, when we were using two pieces of them, so we used both of them, so that didn't matter for that. Yeah, let's take a look at this video, some other, other features about that. That's about it. Uh, I think that's about it. What I want to cover for this morning, so we can s split into the different uh, unfinished modules. Once again, the red ones, anything that's red, the download file for for this positionally correct staircase walls thing, you can download it on page three, uh, just for orientation. Uh, now I don't think I uploaded my what I have right now, so I'm gonna do well. Yeah, we have that on my desktop here, Staircase Walls, upload the latest, which we worked on today, just during this meeting. That's right there, so you can see exactly what we did in the earlier part of the meeting here. Uh, it's just got the few wall sections there. It's an old, one of our old assembly files that I put here for position positioning. Okay. All right, that sounds good. Actually, I have one question. Mm -hmm. So say I wanted to work on an interior wall module mm -hmm. that no one has designed yet. Yeah. What is the source of truth for that? Like, should I go to the Sweet Home file, the technical drawing for Rosebud, 
Yes. Um, except the bottom blocking is not going to be right position. We know that the blocking is 8.5 inch. I don't know if that file has bottom blocking, but I think it has two by fours. We're doing two by twos. The source of truth is yes, those are, uh, except maybe not. They're as far as how they look. Yeah. Uh, it's largely correct, but then we have to basically verify if it's a plain plain module. It's just got the plain 14 inch blocking spacing with 8.5 inches on the bottom. If it's shorter keep the blocking at 14 inches and whatever the shorter one ends up being at like for example the one the one that's a question like how long will this be is that's a question for module um, 63 here how long is that gonna end up being uh, zoom out 64 is the regular one 63 is gonna be truncated 65 is the door Source of, of truth is largely the the sweet home, but better yet, uh, assume that you're looking at it from, say you're, assume that you're like, assume some kind of a convention. So go like, okay, that's Paul, you looking here from this side, moving to the right, you're going to have the full cavities, 14, 14, and the last cavity is going to be a little shorter, whatever is going to end up. There's also... Uh, just to point out on the CAD files, they're available. There's just sm small detail files that are also here uh, below. This is also correct for position, but not for detail here. So, oh, actually, so these um, you can model off maybe 63 and others because those are good. 64 is good. But here's uh, some more, like if you look at the cross section of the house, like this is actually looking at it, it's actually slopes down a little bit, but those, that's actually I drew, what I drew there was the, the middle separating wall module. Um, and here, there's, there's some inaccuracy, like for example, look at this one. We already discussed that if our wall module is there, this one's going to be a little towards the left. Um, so this file is no longer good. I thought it was good before. But this wall module, based on what we just talked about today, because you have this wall module next to the staircase here, it's got a 3.5 inch thickness. This wall module is going to move to the left here in my drawing. And this is going to shrink this one. They look almost the same here, but they should be like this. Oh yeah, and we're making them all the same height. There's, there's a, a jagged edge. No, that's not. Just keep them all the same height. Um, Keep them all the same height for now. Okay. Source of truth besides is just if you want the whole concept, the technical sweet home file is the best, but it's got little details probably missing. Um, does that kind of answer it? Because the design, you have to really understand the design and more about design. Katrina did put forth another doc here, which maybe just I'll show you. So under under build instructions, there's the next. There's build instructions. There's this first doc, wall module build instructions, as opposed to the parts list. So this one here gives you a little more insight. Like the, you can't substitute for like really understanding what's going on here, and. Uh, Now these are, what's this apply to? Is this apply to exterior or interior? Um, this is exterior, but going through more like she's connecting. Okay, here's actual materials we use. Um, further down is the detail of bonding the walls together with a batten and a top plate, and then code sections which actually discuss that. So battens in between. And there's the lag bolts that go between the wall modules, whether interior or exterior. Except this is more like exterior because it's got a top plate, didn't it? The interior walls will have like a triangular piece because they're sloping very slightly. They're sloping four inches over the whole length. Um, and there's this batten thing here. It's about what we got. And some details, like for example, if you got headers on the double door, 
uh, how much can you span with that header so there's code code details here you can look window headers the actual span that you're concerned about is like 42 because there's a stud underneath there so the actual supported space is 42 inches on these modules um, yeah so that's where she's at on that one it doesn't address the interior walls because the interior walls are just two by four modeled after the exterior walls except with two by fours whenever it gets thinner keep the bays the same because we're putting insulation in there for sound and then make the third bay Thinner, accordingly. Question. Yeah. Uh, um, one concern I have is that, you know, I'll do one of these uh, wall modules incorrectly, you know, based on one of these technical documents. Uh -huh. uh, so in terms of like quality control later, like I assume there's a process at the end when when we think we have this full model that it, it will be checked against all these kind of requirements and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the discussion and quality control that I started today. How do you tell that the final assembly file is, is control, controlled in quality to all the details with full technical correctness and all of that? Out of the master CAD file, we generate the build cheat sheet. So that at that point, we pull out. We can also do, there's a, a drawing dimensioning workbench. We could get the dimensions right within FreeCAD as basically like blueprints. We could do that as a quick way. Or we can do the cheat sheets like we do right now, where we manually label all the part lengths. But actually, once we have the full digital model, it's super easy to just draw technical built technical sheets from each module. And that's why you want to have all the detail, so we can do that. But yeah, after we've got the full digital model, this is absolutely transparent. What we're struggling with right now is the lack of a complete model, um, because we're to this point we're still like changing stuff. Refinements. These are refinements. So stuff that you would not see like the first time. We already changed this since the 2016 version of the house. It's still just little details that make it faster and stronger and better. It's is what's going on still at this point with a full digital model. So actually by Saturday, if we've got the full digital model, I'm going to ship it off to to be the architects. They're they're saying that they're willing to help, and we could ideally get the full building package done with a collaboration with BNM, BNIM Architects here. So, which are collaborators, Brian's actually doing a collaborative nonprofit with Bob Berkebeel, the principal of that, ex-principal of that company. So uh, I think we're, we're going to get some assistance on this. Uh, or if not, we should look for assistance from some comp some architecture firm that wants to do this for the public domain. Uh, or we can pay, you know, pay for it if we don't don't have that support. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Should we uh, should we kind of set some specific goals to have this done by Saturday and what that entails in terms of yeah who is doing what for them? Well, for who's doing what is uh, we're kind of self allocating to best we can on the uh, individual modules, but they are being done. That full full model is getting completed. So uh, the rule here was anything that's in red in red on the wiki for the FreeCAD file that's still game uh, so take any module right now that's still red it seems to be working because what's happening the full digital model there people are just popping new modules in there and the red is disappearing so that seems to be working we're organizing um, around the, the full mo the, the assembly file yeah no and I, I just think uh, like from a psychological perspective if uh if we don't have like clarity around like you know ideally you know this is this is how many things we have left so ideally you know me knowing that i should be trying to complete you know five of these before saturday would be very helpful in terms of kind of just planning my own time and so if we were able to get down to just setting some clear goals i, I think it could help people to you know, better understand what, what they're aiming for as opposed to just kind of doing them as we can and then it just would happen as efficiently yeah to be quantitative about that if we go through a quick count, I see. And we're not focusing on this cheat sheet at this point. No, uh, we're we're doing we're doing both in a way. Like in a workshop, we we generate cheat sheets that go into the current work doc. Like yesterday, we had a few wall modules we wanted to build. We just drew that up real quick off the off the FreeCAD. But the 
best thing is to have the free cat so you can get all the information out of it readily. So I'm not I'm not sure that I understood. So so when when if I'm working on one of these, I at this point since I'm not there in the workshop and stuff, I shouldn't work on the cheat sheet. Correct? Should not? Higher priority would be the empty ones, the the red ones, because the cheat sheets come come out readily from it. We were okay. working on the cheat sheets before because that was actually a remote team that was doing that independently from the Sweet Home file. And all that is largely correct, but there's going to be little details we're going to have to go back over. And now that we, now that we, because we were trying to get the full, full cheat sheets off of that before. But since we might, we have the increased level of detail within FreeCAD, you know, we picked out, we saw a couple of bugs fixed them, and now you can ge generate the dimensional drawings readily with a click of a button on, on FreeCAD, so the cheat sheets are less important compared to the, the full digital files. I see. Okay. Twenty-six, counting twenty-six that are missing. Um, so if we've got, it's like three modules per person. If we got eight people, and then I guess it depends on whether or not we're doing all those individually, or, just, or some or all of those we're doing kind of in those pairs. I don't know which makes the most sense. Yeah. Um, Right, so um, how do we want to do that? Do people want to pair up or just keep working on them individually at this point? Or? Well, I'd like to work on a module of 49. Yeah. And yeah, anyone wants to work with me, so I want to cat it first and then build it. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think. Can you repeat what you're saying? saying? I mean, you can allocate the work directly to each person or have each person assigned to one thing, but I think it works better, like how you said, just everyone just doing their, their share, three at least. So the goal is for each of us to do three. That's the minimum, yeah. Modules and place them in position. Place them in position. Um, how many days is it going to take? Can we get... Now, just the other thing about 4950. Those are the complicated ones, so Paul, I would stay away from them. They've got the plumbing in there, which influences that the fact that 48, 49, and 50 are actually 2 by 6s They're fatter, and they've got the plumbing in there, so I'd stay away from that. Uh, we didn't go over any of those details. Uh, but after that, you can. There's 51... Let's see, if you look at the uh, interior, yeah, after 50 is game, but uh, 48 and 49 are basically the core, 48, 49, 50 are the core of the house. If you can build 48, 49, 50, you can effectively put like just any walls around that and you'll have a functional kitchen and bathroom. So uh, we haven't gone through any of those details. It might be useful to go through those details. Um, but what we haven't done much at all is like the interior doors of which there are three like 51 56 uh, and then two on the top floor those are um, if you don't know how the doors are that's that the door design uh, but they are in the sweet home model the model is quite good the discrepancy might be just the exact dimensions of the rough opening. If you go, um, so in other words, we have to document that a little better, so maybe I can work on 
uh, those the ones that are easy yeah and then yeah the sources truth on truth on those is the, the sweet home 3d technical model that's where you extract all of those from uh, but 48 49 50 stay away from at this point would we cover the details for those like tomorrow or the day after tomorrow? we could do that okay. uh, so that'll be good um, now for roll division, I see a bunch of stuff that's still like, okay, has any, well, if we go, just just to get the reckoning of the truth on the, well, I counted like 26 missing ones. Um, how much does the actual latest model reflect of that truth? So I'd expect that, um, let's see, let's download that real quick and open it. Yeah, I mean that's that's our current status. Um, so yeah, like make these things transparent. So you can see that yeah they have their real shape because it like from the outside it just looks like uh, yeah, it doesn't have detail but yeah these are good um, those windows here the windows are done windows are done here so those two and four they they can pop right in these two are nothing special that's nothing special those are nothing special either this is this is all like pretty relatively easy to do then then the onus goes on the interior ones uh, so yeah, as soon as we have some of those, start popping them in. Um, we've got the, as far as the design of the this section here, the roof is similar to that, so that can be popped on the top pretty quickly. Um, now, for the interior ones and all the other ones, there's there's learning in there. We're you know we're doing these exercises, but yeah, like in the next couple of days, if we can fill out the interior and. That would be good because we still want to finish up on the on the top. We haven't touched the garage, the carport there, and then uh, the most, as I mentioned, the most complicated one being the bathroom. So bathroom, with those three modules there. For a full digital model, we can submit to a, an architect. Here you've got just about all of the structure. Like we don't have the, for example, we, we're missing the top plate, the bottom plate. Those are relatively easy. So. Uh, but this kind of detail what we have in here and also we have to tell them oh we're actually doing lag bolts in between them um, if the archi architects see that they can pretty much take this as is and generate all the detailed drawings which I don't know how it's gonna look typically um, the house detail is quite complicated like a lot of different little detailed drawings for how you know like exactly how you're doing a weather resistive barrier uh, flashing like around windows, the, all the water details like uh, around the foundation, the, the flashing around on top of the sill plate, things like that. Um, yeah, they take the model and they have they basically generate all kinds of uh, detailed little drawings from it um, that someone can collaborate on that. There's also, like for the foundation, there is a pretty complete model of the foundation already, like with the, some of the detail there. Just if you want to see where that is. Uh, so under CAD, there is a foundation. So if you go back to the top, foundation. Where is that? No, not here. But I do want to show you this. I mean, so this is Rosebud. That's what we're working on right now without the carport. Here's the 2,000 square foot version of it. Are we working on the version with the carport? Yes, we are. Here's a two-story that's, that's just... Not two-story, one-story that's basically two of them side-by-side side with a walkway in between. That's not a finished model. But we... We actually have quite a bit on this one. Katrina's pretty much developed that one fully. 
This is another configuration with two side by side, which is the larger version of what I just showed you. So these are, this is a rosebud, this is a rosebud connected by a common area and like a little greenhouse thing. Um, and then like this is, yeah, like just look at this framed out version of, you can do whatever, like this is like a much larger house. This has got thousand square feet there. Uh, that's like another thousand square feet right there and another thousand, this is, looks like 3,000 or 4,000 square feet. So Are there like, limits? No, two, 2750, no limits to this. You well, can go what three about floors. Like, like support, like how, how many feet can be between? Yeah, but, but notice that this is modular. So each of these things is a box of 16 by 16. If you put them next to each other, they already have their own walls. Well, so, so limit is 16? We're working on 16 foot modules right now. If you went longer than that, you'd need stronger joists. So 16 is the basics here. Okay. Yeah, 16, 16 for the joists, however long you want to make it. So like this, this part there is that's elongated there. It's got like two, three or four, like three or four. So, yeah. Like if you do a workshop, we're gonna have to have columns because if we're de designing using this method, using the same trusses that we're doing right now, we can also do the rebar trusses, which are um, they can go to 20 feet pretty well. But that's the general idea there. Um, so that's like, um, yeah, lo look like that, you know, modern look. Uh, so that's rosebud, rosebud with uh, kind of rosebud. It's got a, a patio there. Right. So, I mean, you can get very creative on this. That's the cool thing. Like, you can be designing. Like, what I see in a game is the game could actually create amazing designs like this yeah, yeah. <laughs> in well, a game environment. The problem is things like uh, making sure all the constraints are very clear. Like, for example, yep. that you can't place more than four modules in a right. row, or that will require. Well, you don't have joists. To, they're not going to be long enough. You'll see that in a game because you got the joist module, let's say, and they're only 16 feet lumber pieces. So I guess you can like double them up and like put, you know, double them. You got double that. That could probably go to like 20, 30, 25, 24 and feet. And another problem is if people make custom designs, what's the workflow for getting that approved for like to be constructed in a city? Every design has to be submitted to a building department with a full set of drawings and they s stamp it. Is it. How expensive is that? $500. Like or from between like 50 to 500 dollars you submit the plans some I don't know yeah it's a little fee it's not too expensive if you have one well you have to do it at the level of each house that's just administrative overhead like when you buy a new house you got to maybe like register it with a city or whatever just little details it's not a big cost it's okay. quite manageable I was yeah I thought it might be like 5,000 it's not like the architects oh, cost the architects cost would be like 5,000 that's what we're doing we're, okay. we're doing, we're the architect, we're being the architects here. We're avoiding all that cost. If it's a more complicated design, it'll be more like maybe the 2,000 square foot might be like 10,000 in design costs or whatever. Um, now, for what we're doing right now, which is the level of development LOD 500, it's going to be a lot. That takes a few months of work. That's going to be like 30. 40, 50,000 if we were to go to the level of detail that we're doing right now. Uh, and we're not done with all the detail. Like we're, we can do more like electrical and all that, like super detailed. It just takes a lot of time unless you, so you can break it up. That's why it's like, we got to do some of these things as teams because they just take too much time. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to show the foundation just just to uh, this is uh, there's a fi one file that's a pretty complete foundation thing assemblies there it is it's this foundation here so this is like getting into the plumbing but this is actually how that's going to look there's a big shower that's sitting in the workshop there. That's what's going to happen there. It's going to be right next to the walls. Uh, there's a toilet. That's that's basically what we have right now. 
and then there's a digital file for that but the foundation detail this is actually fully detailed like you see those um that's what we have right there right now that's the those mud sill anchors that's the foundation um yeah yeah that's the insulation that's on the outside already there's more details like we're going to put this a cement board on the outside so that mice don't chew up your insulation. There's detail on this flexible flashing that the water doesn't seep in and stuff like that. We've got a lot of that. Um, so we can put that into the full model. Yeah, I just wanted to show that we do have the, the foundation detail. You can study that where all the anchors go and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. For the stairs, uh, we're kind of going to do, it's kind of like this, we're experimenting with a lot of different stuff, but I mentioned this already, we started with this, and that's a lot of cutting there, like, so yeah, these, these uh, stringers for the stairs, nah, we'll just put blocks, because we have a cage there, from the walls there, we can just put uh, basically pieces of lumber, just stick it to the wall, and then you put your... It's going to be double 2 by 12 so it's really stiff and solid. So we're going to make the treads hanging off the walls, not like we don't have to cut these three long stringers, which are a bunch of work. So for the cost of those stringers, we effectively have all those flat uh, treads. So it's like uh, stringerless stairs. It's good. It's easier. You don't have to cut this. We'd have to otherwise cut this whole shape. Uh, you could buy these things off the shelf, but they'll make those to fit our house specifically, so we have to actually cut it. So we're not going to do that. It's sim simpler than that. That's that's a great relief because it's like, man, that's a bunch of work there. Okay, so to divide the work, I don't know, we've kind of been going at kind of wild. The number, magic number, Matt, is like 27 or so, 26 modules we counted. Uh, so yeah, just keep going. But let's check in. Like, let's let's see tomorrow where we're at. Uh, my hope is to get maybe like some of these doors and prepare the actual utility modules. They're 48, 49, 50. Um, other people could work on um, simple wall modules, of which there's enough on the up, upper floor to pretty much cover all of them. There's like, I mean, right here we've got one, two, three, besides the doors. You can put in placeholders for doors. Um, I'll start working on those, but 60, 61. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 right there. You know, if, we, if we know how to do them, like, once you, once you get the hang of it, the actual technical, technical execution of the drawing is like 10 minutes when you're good at FreeCAD. But to figure it out, okay, that's the dimensions, that's the design work, that kind of takes. you got to think about it, okay? There's a cutout for the, the staircase. That's what we're organizing around. You've got the geometrical constraints. That's how you figure everything out. Um, okay, so let's leave it at that and get into some CAD.